Looking at the Crown Majesta, what was arguably my prized possession at a point in my life where I was already just absolutely fucking wrecked. Yeah. With the Not Fast banner on the windshield of this fucking wrecked ass car. I I was like, dude, I I got nothing. Like I just <laughs> Yo, what's going on, everyone? Welcome to Substance Podcast. I'm your host, Liam. And I'm your other host, Matt. Um, Today's episode, we decided that we wanted to sit down and talk about both of our brands. Um, We haven't... I mean, yes, some of you guys know who I am. Some of you guys know who Matt is. Maybe some of you guys are just new to the podcast. um, But one of the things that me and Matt share in common, along with a lot of other things... (laughs) um, Looking alike, talking alike... Yeah, dude, we're just <laughs> brothers. Um, no, I I have a brand, um, and Matt used to have a brand, um, and a lot of the things that we're into and things that kind of tie into brands um, align too. So we figured it'd be a cool episode to kind of talk about brand stuff and and how it relates to cars and our experiences with it, and just a little bit of backstory on us and our brands. Um, so hopefully you guys find this interesting, but. Before we dive into it, um, there's been lots of, I feel like lots of cool, exciting things that have been happening in both of our lives. As I would now. agree. Yeah, you, uh, you were involved in some, some cool shit over the past couple of days, right? Yes. Um, so, it's something that I honestly want to have an episode about pretty soon. Uh, we need to find, I think they're currently working on a highlight compilation, I guess, basically, because <laughs> the entire event... Um, Ended up taking a little over eight hours, which none of us planned. Um, but anyway, the event in question is the Machine Auto Salon. Um, and that group of render artists that I'm constantly talking about, my friends over in... Uh, it's I'm going to call them a collective. I don't know if they'd agree with me about that at this moment. But I'm going to call them a collective uh, that goes by Machine. And uh, they, what they basically did is had a... What I guess would could be boiled down to a competition where they just said, hey, we're going to have, you know, the digital equivalent of the Tokyo Auto Salon. And so they all made uh, cars, whether it was one or multiple, for the occasion. Um, but and then they also made, you know, they, they did exactly what you would do for an auto salon, booth, cars, everything, right. just digitally. And for anybody that is a little confused, we're talking about render art. We're talking about these guys are digitally building like 3D models of cars and not just like boring stock cars. Like they are going crazy, um, pushing the boundaries of like, you know, different styles, merging them together. There's a lot of cool stuff. And you've heard us talk about um, render stuff on this podcast before. And it's something that we're super into. Um, and you are actually a judge. Correct. Yes, so Garrett, uh, Sad Machines, is kind of like the organizer of the whole deal, and we are for sure going to have him on an episode here at some point um, because he's somebody that I, I really want to give a platform to to talk about how he approaches this stuff because he very much, that's that's his thing, is he just kind of whatever wild car you know ideas pop into his head, mixing anything you can imagine, any styles and subcultures you can imagine because he can execute it so well. He just does it and it looks great. But anyway, so yes. So machine auto salon is what it was called. MAS. Um, and it was, this was the first time it's ever been done. They had never done anything like this and they invited me to be a judge, which was really cool. Uh, me and Garrett have had a friendship for a good while. So it just felt, I, it was it sounds like a really like a oh, whole thing to say, but like it was, you know, I was honored, honestly, I was honored to be invited to yeah. do that because I yeah, feel like, sure. you know, being asked to do that comes with an implied air of like, you know, respect. And I, I, you know, I really appreciate that first of all, but you know, I have the same amount of respect for Garrett. I mean, he is like a master of his craft and he would hate me for <laughs> wording it like that, but he is. Yeah. Um, but anyway, yes. Yeah, so, This was the first year uh, I actually had judges along with me, um, one of which is, I'll probably 
Well, I'm going to say him now, so I'm, I don't have to shout him out. But at Povey Pullinen is a uh, is an automotive artist, and he he's just awesome. Y'all need to go check out his Instagram is at p o v i p u. I don't want to misspell the last name, so I will spell it out at the very end. Okay. Sorry, Povey, but um, <laughs> Povey Pullinen, um. The page administrator of undergroundstyles.us, which I have shouted out on the show before. Mm-hmm. Um, <clears throat> and then Noriaro, actually, which was, I didn't know anything about that. So yeah. when we were all in the Discord, the whole event was being live streamed on Twitch. The whole event was taking place in the Discord, but it was being live streamed on Twitch. Um, and again, I won't go too far into it because we are going to have an episode about this once I can get Liam to, you know, kind of view the highlight reel and I can kind of explain to him what everything happened. But yeah, when we were like in the middle of it and I had, he was like the secret judge, like the secret guest judge. Yeah. And I literally heard somebody like, Oh shit, he's here. I'm like, what are you talking? And then I heard Noriara's voice. And I was like, what the fuck is that <laughs> Noriara? And sure enough, he was there and he was judging, you know, he was, he was watching the whole thing. And, you know, kind of during the middle, it came to our attention that, um, Elvis from Stance Nation was also watching it on Twitch. I mean, that's fucking cool so, as shit. It's so it's so hard for me to like temper myself, but it really deserves a whole episode because I, I've mentioned this feeling that I've only had, I guess now two other times on this podcast where I just get enveloped with this feeling all at once that. I'm involved in the very beginning of something really special. And that happened with not fast that I'll talk about in this podcast that happened with this podcast with Mm -hmm. substance that happened on Friday night. That's fucking at MAS. I mean, it, it's just, this is the beginning of something really fucking cool that I hope. I agree. A lot more people will be able to, even if not just get directly involved with, just be able to, you know, right. take a look and, and f- explore it. For anybody that is listening right now or watching and, you know, maybe in your head you're picturing that it's, like, just some kind of, like, thing that, I don't know, maybe you modify some cars in a video game and upload them to that. That's not what this is at all. This is people that are insanely talented with 3D rendering stuff, literally creating Among things other things, me. really. But, again, right. we'll it's, say that. It's, but yeah. it's amazing. And, you know, the fact that, you know, certain people are tuning in to, like, watch this should kind of give you a better perspective of how like cool this is yeah um and so yeah we really like employ you guys to go check out like any of the guys that are involved with that and and garrett especially and just any of that stuff is super sick and i think it's it's super underrated at this time and i think i will mention because i'm going to do it within the next couple days i think i'm going to restructure what little there is on Mm -hmm. my uh on my instagram and i I want to create more of a streamlined pathway for people that come onto the substance Matt Instagram mm. to kind of like lead see them to these different stuff, artists. Yeah. So you can go see, because like that's going to be one of my big things. I'm kind of, that I'm realizing very quickly is the platform that I'm being offered by virtue of being a co-host on this podcast. Mm. I want to be able to give people like, I don't, I don't want these guys to be in the dark anymore. Yeah, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. I want to be able to give people that even have a slight interest in just taking a look at what is going on. Oh, literally? To give them so you can just get on the slide. I built the slide for you, and you can just go on the slide. Yeah, the crazy thing for me is that a lot of these guys are, like, better than all of these, like, render artists that are huge and well-known by everybody. Mm-hmm. Like, their household names in the car community. These guys are the small guys, the underdogs, and they're fucking arguably way better than some of those guys. Yeah. Um, and yeah. so they, they deserve to have all of this credit and, and more attention on the work that they're doing. So hopefully we can provide a little bit of that through this. Definitely uh, going to work on it. But definitely definitely going to be – definitely be some that I work on. But, yeah, we will have a – we're going to have a whole episode on that because it's yeah. important. And uh, in my life, there's been some interesting developments. Uh, <laughs> I did say that last week, um, I think I mentioned it on the podcast, that I was going down to Florida for GTR World Cup. Um, I did that. That was really fun. Um, I'm not huge into motorsports. Um, I'm not I'm not a competitive person at all. And so, you know, any kind of sports 
whatsoever kind of bore me the majority of the time. Um, but being personally involved, you know, with a team of people and, you know, we have our, like, our car and we're voting for, like, we're trying to get that car to be the one that wins. Um, it was really fun. I, I really enjoyed it. It was quite competitive. Um, and that's not usually something that I'm into, but it got, it got it's real definitely interesting. a different dynamic when you're personally involved. Yeah, you know it I mean? got, it got real interesting to where it was like, you know, we showed up with a, a car that makes like 21, 2200 horsepower. Um, and it's actually like for the, the class that it was in, which was a, a pro street class. Um, it was like the middle ground. Towards the low end, car, which is crazy. Your car was mid. <laughs> yeah, no, well, no, that's crazy considering like how much power it makes. Oh like, yeah, that's that's fucking nuts. Um, but what ended up happening was in qualifying on the Saturday, it ran like a really solid pass. It was like a seven fifty eight at like a hundred and eighty seven hundred and eighty eight mile an hour, um, and that's obviously a great qualifying. The next day. Um, it actually turned out that the two cars in front of it that qualified, one ran like a 7.3, the other one ran like a 7.1, which that's pretty difficult to then like jump to that level. Um, both of those cars ended up getting disqualified because one of them had like a pass, like they literally had nobody to race. All they had to do was just make it down and not jump the light. They jumped the light. <laughs> and then the, the even faster car, like, I don't know, got disqualified for something or other. They may have broke. I don't know. But it was looking really promising that like, our car was going to win. Um, and yeah, when he finally got lined up with another car, the fucking shoot deployed at the 60 foot and he stayed in it and ran a faster car than the, the, uh, ran a faster car, ran a faster time than the car next to him. He ran an eight one, the car next to him ran an eight three with the shoot out, shootout. but he still lost because the guy got him on the light. Um, and it was such a bummer, but it was so exciting and fun. And I've, I've never personally been involved with any kind of like level of motorsports that, you know, that's like that exciting and crazy. It's really just been like in the grandstands watching stuff. So it was, it was really fun to be a part of that. Um, I would, I would definitely do it again and, and shout out to two brothers. They're, uh, they're a shop in, uh, Cleveland, Tennessee, which is maybe 30 minutes from Chattanooga, uh, or a little bit further than that, but um, they work on big trucks and all kinds of cars and exotics and the owners or one of the owner has a really cool GTR and, uh, that's who had me down there to do some stuff and it was super fun. But, uh, other than that, the interesting developments mm -hmm. are that, mm -hmm. uh, while I was down there, I got word that I needed to come pick up my car, which is quite far away. I'm not going to, yeah, I'm not going to go into details um, about the car right now, but it is home. Uh, it's not in the garage currently because we moved it out so that we could record the podcast. Um, but it is sitting in the driveway outside of the garage right now. And it is a wonderful feeling to have my car home after such a long time and, uh, seeing it sit really fucking low. We were all, on uh, wheels. we were all standing outside in the dark in 28 degree weather, <laughs> which uh, you North people are like, ah, nah, nah. look, 28 is cold to us. Okay, fuck off. Um, but <laughs> I was fine. I wasn't that uh, cold. Yeah, yeah, because you're from Michigan. Shut your <laughs> ass up. Um, but no, we were we were all just standing, standing out there, the, just yeah. admiring it. I've in been, 28 degrees. I mean, it I've is, been standing out in the street like all day today, basically <clears throat> just looking at the fucking thing. Um, when a car is unpainted and it's it has been you know, being worked on and you can still just stand there and stare at it like that. Yeah. You know, it's a banger. Yeah. I wasn't going to mention that it was unpainted, but that's fine. Pe people, who, people who are listening to the podcast can get the exclusive, but I won't tell you the story or any of the fucking bullshit that comes with it. There'll be, <laughs> there'll be a video. Damn, that comes. I'm not even going to lie. What? The minute I said unpainted, I was like, Fuck, <laughs> I don't know. If he was ah, it's totally fine. I've, I've, I posted a picture <coughs> on Twitter. A few people know, but you know, we have a small audience on the podcast, so you guys get lucky to hear that it's... I, yeah, you're lucky to hear that it's not fucking finished. <laughs> uh, there's a whole big backstory with it, and I don't want to get into it yet, but there is a video coming on it real soon. Um, so I guess stay tuned to the YouTube channel for that. But uh, yeah, my car's home. I'm excited about it, even though I'm bummed about a lot of things. But still. Anyways, um, you want to dive into brand stuff? That's, uh, yeah. Let's talk about some some shit. What uh what do you want to do? Do you want to start off and just kind of uh, give like where we started and then kind of just go from there? 
little bit back and forth? Yeah, I think uh, just since you have more experience presenting, I think I'll like you me let you let go into yours, off? and then I'll kind of okay. That's yeah. that's fine with me. Um, so my brand is LEP Automotive. Um, it's first off before I say anything, it's a fucking horrible name. <laughs> I literally, I literally hate the name, but it's been such a long time, and it's so like established it's really difficult to then just rebrand and start over um but no the the business uh, i guess officially started um in 2015 um the name lep is actually liam isles productions i've had that name since i was pretty young um i've been doing photo and video stuff for a really really long time um and it wasn't until 2015 that i like switched over to focusing just on car stuff and so i like rebranded it as lep automotive and that was 2015 um and yeah i like started an instagram which is the same instagram that i have now uh which is at like 24 something thousand followers or whatever um yeah, I just started this Instagram account and I was like, this is where I'm going to share pictures and video clips of, you know, any of my photo and video work related to cars. Um, and I just started shooting like really cool videos at like any car meets that I would go to or shows. And at the time I lived in the UK um, and it was at the very end of 2015 that I moved to the US. And so I started the actual like business, I guess, I think it was May. It was May or June of 2015. And so it was really only like a few months that I was in the UK that I would, you know, go hit up some car shows and some meets, make a few videos. And um, I built a fairly solid, you know, reputation in, in the UK in that short period of time. And then I just up and fucking moved to a different country. <laughs> Deuces. And then had to start over. But that's that's kind of the, the rough beginning. Um, and yeah, LEP was a media company to start out. And uh, I'll hand over to you so I'm not just talking the whole no, time. It's, yeah, I think that'll be a good. Yeah, I think so. There. Do a little um, break it up into stages. Well, uh, my brand um, was called Not Fast. One word, Not Fast. Stylized with a period at the end. For some reason, that was always really important to me. <laughs> um, but, uh, yeah, so, you know, I just randomly remembered, just as a total aside. What? Remember the very first time we tested on your fucking iPhone in the hotel room before we even moved into this house when you came to Chattanooga? Yeah, we were in a hotel room, like, the <laughs> night before. And I, dinner. like, r told this story, and it took, like, an hour and a half, and you were like, well. No, it wasn't that long. We recorded, like, a 15, 20-minute thing on my and phone I, just to see how we sounded, like, when we, like, going back and forth. And, yeah, you talked. I oh. talked way too much just about this story. So I'll, I'll, I'll try and, like, keep myself in parameters. Anyway. Hey, you've gotten a lot better about it now that we've done this for, like, shit. Is this, this is, like, the 12th this episode. This is, yeah, so we're, we're right We're, we're now, getting dude. up there, and, and you're a lot more comfortable with, with doing this now, so. I'm not, yeah. not super worried about it. Pat myself on the back. Anyway. <laughs> um, yeah, so it was called Not Fast. And funny enough, it kind of started out as a joke, uh, which sounds really weird, but basically I had an, uh, a DC five and a 2000, what the fuck was it? It was 2006, uh, Acura RSX and I had the type R wing on it and a, uh, an OEM a spec kit. I fucking love that car. But anyway. Because it had the Type R wing, and it was, as we all know, a Honda, you can imagine what one of the most common questions besides do you want to race was. Is it fast? No. No, it's not. It is a Honda. No, it's not fast out of the box. Absolutely not. So, anyway, people would just ask me that to be fucking cute and smart asses and shit all the time, and eventually I just got really, really annoyed. Um, well... I was in my very short-lived uh, venture in art school at the time. And I was taking a typography class. And so I thought it would be just so funny um, for me to make a banner that preemptively answered that question, <laughs> right? And so I was like, I'm going to make a banner that says not fast, but I'm going to like right. stylize it because I was in my top. I'm like, ah, practice, you know, whatever. And I had always, I had always enjoyed, you know, graphic design, typography and stuff. So 
anyway, there was just one night where I just sat there for like four hours. Yeah. Just, just doing, just doing type treatments and stuff. And eventually I landed on the one that stuck. Um, and so I made the one banner and, and it was red and I put it on the bottom of the center mount on the bottom of the, the windshield of my magnesium metallic RSX. And so now whenever anybody was like, Oh, is it fast? I would, I wouldn't even say anything. I would literally just point at the car. Like I just, I thought it was so funny, but anyway, um, so yeah, that's, that's ultimately how the logo and the name came to be. Well, that was pretty early on, like when I started like actually going to shows and stuff. Um, and I had two friends of mine, uh, shout out Josh and Braden in Atlanta that were, they were basically like my first like real like car friends, I guess. And they were both like, oh, that's cool. I was like, if I made you guys some, would you put it on your cars? We can park together at shows. They're like, yeah, fuck it, whatever. Right. And it was funny because they both had BMWs. Um, but anyway, so it was the three of us. We all had uh, center mounted, not fast decals. And I was like, you know. Again, I was fucking new to the whole thing. I was like, I am, we're in a club, you know, this and that. <laughs> There's fucking three of us, you know. Yeah. But um, anyway, so as time went on, I was just kind of like doing what I still do. And now I just voice on this podcast. I was just doing a lot of observing. You yeah. know what I mean? I was just kind of like seeing how all of this worked, you know, what the presence was like online, you know, how things like that. And it's kind of like I had mentioned in, an, uh, in one of the earlier episodes, it's like I was big in Tumblr at the time because at the time, Tumblr was fucking lit. Yeah. Like the two things that I was most interested in my life at that time was graffiti writing and cars. And Tumblr was like the fucking spot for both of those, right? Yeah. And so I was just on Tumblr constantly. And so at that time... All of the like the bigger media companies like Stance Nation at the time like Camber Gang, Dapper Illust, um, Canopy, like all of, all of those all Wait, of those companies. Camber Gang was posting on Tumblr. Yeah, dude. Oh shit. I don't yeah, know. because that I was, mean, I guess I wasn't on there. But that I, was I when they had a newer. lot of. Uh, that was when they had like more like staff photographers, I guess, because they were posting um, photos with like the Camber Gang watermark center mounted but then you'd see all of their fucking cars and shit too with the fucking yeah, banner yeah, this and that yeah. anyhow i was i kept seeing that i kept seeing these cool ass photos of cool cars yeah with this center mount of watermark on the bottom and i was like that's cool yeah that's i don't know why it was just it captured me so oh, no much, I, I definitely agree and i i went through a phase too where i i did that with the LEP logo as well. Like it was just like, I wanted it to be a recognizable watermark mm -hmm. on all the pictures. And I just quickly got over it because it well, ruined my pictures. For I me, didn't, but. I didn't really get over it. <laughs> yeah. But uh, anyway, so because of that, one of the things that I was noticing is like how deadly serious some of these people took this whole thing. Yeah. And I just, <clears throat> I just thought that was so funny. I just thought like how, how weird it is that like so many people are so like exclusionary about this kind of stuff and how they like gatekeeping. Well, I mean, yeah, <laughs> yes. So it's like, anyway, you know, here I am, I'm new to the whole thing and I'm just watching, Yeah, you know, I'm just watching it all. And, but the other thing is in being the exclusionary thing, I, it was at that point that I started noticing like the formula to get, you know, attention and do, and of course it, it changed little by little over time into whatever's trendy. Right. But yeah. the point is, it's like, eventually I started, you know, getting used to seeing the not fast banner on the front of my car, just walking out to get in the car, this and that. Yeah. And just over time, it's just bleeding into me a little bit more, a little bit more like, I want to do that. I want to like take photos and have a watermark and like post them on Tumblr and stuff. Yeah. And so I started shooting stuff myself. Um, and then from there, I, God, the, some of these memories are going to be so fuzzy just because this was like, this all started happening in 2016. And then I think I went like public with the, you know, the Instagram and all that stuff in like 2017. Yeah. So it's been a little while. Um, but you know, I started, uh, I approached a couple of photographers that were local to me. Um, my, my real, one of my best friends, uh, Tyler in Atlanta was kind of like, I remember we were sitting at Steak and Shake one night 
And I was like telling him that I had that moment where I was kind of like, this is a good fucking idea. I really want to do something with this. And he's yeah. like, dude, what do you do it? What are you talking like? You know, because at the time I was telling him about my whole idea that had been like fleshed out into what it ultimately was where not fast is, you know, I can sit here at least at the time I could sit, sit you down for an hour and a half and tell you about the ultimate, um, you know, philosophy behind it. But at the end of the day, it was build for you. It was three, it was just build for you. And it's exactly yeah. what we always talk about here in that just do what you want. Do what you want. Just yeah. do a good job. Right. But do what you want. And it's like, so, you know, I was so, and I mean, I still am, just not in the same, like, avenue, but I was just so passionate about that idea. And I just built this whole brand around that idea. And it was just such, I guess I worded it pretty enough that I was able to get more and more photographers to jump on board with me telling them up front, like, hey, man, you know, I'm trying to put together a team of photographers that have very distinct styles mm -hmm. to take photos of cars that have very distinct styles. Yeah. Because that's what this community needs more of. That's what needs to be focused on in this community. Well, and you, I told you were very them, big on original content too, right? All of my all, content all was original was, yeah. content. All of it. That wasn't I'm, from you. But, I'm glad, but yeah, yeah, I'm glad you said that, actually. That's kind of one of the other... One of the other big things for me was all of it was original content. Yeah. Just to be an extension of be original. Do your own thing, right? Um, but anyway, yeah, so, dude, I, and I'm still endlessly grateful uh, to all of my guys that were, uh, my photographers are not fast because as much as I would have wanted to, I was up until the very end, probably the last couple of months while we were still doing our thing, mm -hmm. I was able to start paying them. Yeah. It would be, I would DM each of them personally and it would be no copy paste bullshit. Like I would write out something different every time asking them like, Hey man, um, you know, my name is Matt. Uh, this is my brand. Not fast. If you want to just take it, if you have a second and you have the desire, take a look at our page, see what you think. But you know, I look for photographers that have a very distinct, um, you know, original style. Yeah. And you do. Yeah. I mean, you, your style has feel to it. Um, you know, I can't pay you. I don't have money to pay you. I'm just going to tell you that up front, you know, but I just, I figured I would ask you because we, you know, as you can see on the page, we have some guys that are doing it. And I just, if you'd be interested, we would really love to have you on the team, this and that. I think at, we didn't really have a lot of rotation. A lot of the guys that, you know, started stayed with us until the bitter end. Yeah. Um, but I think at our, the most photographers that we had, I want to say there was like 14 or 15. We had, uh, we had two guys in Japan, mm -hmm. uh, two people in Australia, uh, one person in the UK. And I think the rest of us were in the U S um, but, what, uh, sorry, I don't mean to interject, no, but, um, yeah, this one, you might have to stop me a little bit. Cause I'll yeah. just fucking as, uh, as photographers, like for them to come on board, obviously you've been up front with them that you can't afford to pay them. What were, what do you think was like the, the selling point for them? What was it that would, you know, appeal to them where like as a photographer is like, why, what I, this sounds bad. No, why, 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 why did they want to be involved? Yeah, yeah. Why should I? So. That's a great question, honestly. Yeah. And it's like, I don't really have a concrete answer just in that I don't want to be like, because my fucking idea was so good, they were honored to be a part. No, that's obviously not what I'm going to say. But you think it's because they all kind of believed based, in like, Yeah, the based idea on the it? feedback from them, whenever I would talk to them, you know, in the group chat about it, the general consensus was kind of that. They were like, you know, like we enjoy being a part of this team because we like why you're doing this. Yeah. You know, but my other thing with them was kind of the same thing that I want to do with the machine guys is like y'all, none of those guys at that time. I mean, none of they none of them were small fries. I mean, they had a, you know, a following. Yeah. But in my eyes, it was not nearly enough. 
Yeah. Like right. you, you wanted to help bring I, stuff I to them, them, bring stuff into the brand too. And, you know, I wanted original grow content, together. but I wanted that, the traffic to that original content to be rerouted to them. Yeah. All the while, the philosophy that I had for not fast would just be kind of shared along the way. Yeah. Um, and so, yeah, I mean, it was obviously it was very important for me to tell them up front, I cannot pay you. Yeah. I cannot afford it. If, if I'm being totally honest with anybody that knows what not fast is, I lost money. Oh, I across, know. You know. Like, I never made a profit. I never broke even. Not fast was a net loss. But Which, that's a that's a lot like a lot of people don't understand that about going into business, especially with car stuff. Like you're gonna lose money. But well like th- yeah, some people is, have though, like their little cheat codes and there is ways that like yeah you can avoid it, but like ultimately majority of the time if you're trying to do something good for the community and like doing what other brands probably won't because they're trying to maximize their profit margins, you're probably going to lose money. Well, but, but I want to emphasize but, though, I want to emphasize though. I like, I was so passionate about this. I didn't have money to lose. <laughs> yeah. Like I was, I, I was working 50 to 55 hours a week. Yeah. And at, you know, during like the first year of it, I was working that much and going to school Mm. and I was using the fucking one gallon left in my tank when I got home to try and like do some sticker designs before I, you know, went back to sleep and, you know, try and do all that stuff. That's, that's a lot of people like, I'm sure people can relate to that. Like if you're really passionate about something, like you have your day job or whatever, but if you're not spending the extra amount of time that you have when you get home, so like work on your your passions and your your interests, your hobbies, whatever. Like you ain't gonna get anywhere. Like right. you, you have to be like super driven and passionate about this stuff. Um, but anyway, going back to um, LEP, like I originally, obviously, like I said, started out as it being a media company. It was purely just so that you know I'd been doing photo video work for a long time. I just wanted somewhere that was specifically just for the car content that I was making. Um, and so I'd made a, a new YouTube channel as well. Um, I already had a pretty large YouTube channel um, before LEP Automotive. Um, and so I didn't want to start uploading car stuff on there and then just have the mix of demographics because it's a completely different audience. Um, I just wanted to have a completely separate channel that was just for car stuff. Um, and so that ended up being, you know, my main focus. I really stopped with the other channel and I know a lot of people back in that time were disappointed. Um, but car stuff was a huge passion of mine, uh, my entire life growing up. I loved cars. Um, and photo and video work was another large passion of mine, just like Matt said, where, you know, you were super into graffiti stuff and cars. My two things were, you know, cameras and cars. And so for me to be able to like combine them, um, I had my, you know, I just gotten my driver's license in like 2015. Uh, and so then I had the freedom to be able to go to car shows and it was more accessible for me to be at meets, you know, late in the evening and like just out, socializing with people that had cars and being like, Hey, I'm a photographer, blah, blah, blah. And so that's when I like made that step into, um, being a car photographer. But the, the business, even for years after that, even when I moved to the U S it was purely just a media company. I provided a service to people. People paid me to shoot their cars, shoot events, whatever. That's all it was, but it grew a large audience from the stuff that I was doing. Um, as soon as I moved over to the US, I immediately kind of followed after some of the like the models that had been set before. You know, I'd seen Crispy make these, you know, after movies of some of these big events. For me, it was like, okay, I really like the style. I like the format. Like, clearly it does well. I need to do that and, like, put my own style and take on it. Um, and I did, I started going to a few events and making these after movies, you know, longer form videos that were like 20 minutes in length and had these different sections where there's like a feature of a car and then the event, another feature of a car, whatever. Um, and then started throwing like after party stuff in there too. Um, and I developed this style that was like pretty known for it just being mine. 
Um, and it just grew a huge audience. People loved the stuff that I was putting out from certain events. Um, Gatlinburg especially. I went the very first year, which was 2016, and I made an after movie in the similar kind of format to how it had been done before for other events. And because it was the first show and nobody else was doing it, it blew up. And ever since then, it's kind of been the same thing. A lot of people have known me for slamming off Gatlinburg. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, it was it was just you know quite a few years of me just doing photo and video stuff. I was purely just super into that. That's how I literally I did it full time. That was that was how I paid my bills, which I don't really have that many bills. Um, I was living with my parents when I moved to the U.S. Um, I got very lucky with that. I'm long story short. I'm a U.S. citizen. I was born in the U.S. Uh, my whole family is British. My dad works for Ford, and so we moved over here because of him. I wasn't included, but because I'm a citizen, I just piggybacked off of their move and slowly started my own life here. Um, so I didn't really have all that many bills, and I was really just traveling for events as much as I could, making a little bit of money here and there to pay for stuff. Um, basically just making enough money so that I could travel and do the things that I wanted to do. Um, I'm, I'm pretty fortunate for that. But it wasn't until I started ending up having like a lot more bills. I was like moving out of my parents kind of out. Dude, I'd like move away and just drive around in my car for months at a time. Like, yeah, I didn't. When he, the first time he told me that, he was talking about how he was dude, just kind of like would, living. I was like, fucking what? I would I literally, know that. <laughs> yeah, the first couple of years in the US, I was just like driving around and, and couch surfing. Like, thank thank God, like I knew so many people and, and met so many people in, in within like the first year of living in the US. Mm-hmm. Um, I was just driving around and, and sleeping on couches, sleeping in my car, doing whatever to just make it out to every and any event that I could so that I could film stuff because that's just what I love doing. Um, But it it started getting really difficult because I was obviously realizing like, okay, this is not sustainable. It's really difficult to to make a living doing this. It's really tough on yourself mentally to just like not have the same place to stay every single day. Right. You don't Um, have any like concrete. Yeah. There's literally, it was no constant in my life whatsoever. Um, and so it was tough, but, uh, I'd always had this thought in the back of my mind about starting a brand. Um, I've always been like, just because I'm creative minded, I I've always loved graphic design when I was younger, like all of the like BMX shirts that I would buy were always really cool graphics. Um, and so I, I've always just been obsessed with that kind of stuff. And so when I started diving into that and thinking like, well, I've got a big audience, why don't I do something with this and like make merchandise? Maybe if I like I'm selling merchandise that could fund some of the projects that I want to do. Like I had gotten to a point where I was kind of sick and tired of dealing with like clients. You know, nobody ever really talks about that side of photo and video stuff where 50 or 60 percent of your job is not actually doing the creative stuff it's trying to get clients trying to advertise trying to plan like all of the logistics side of it takes up so much and it takes away from like the creativity of it um and so you know photo and video stuff seems like a really appealing career path for a lot of people because it's like oh yeah you just you know you take pretty pictures and like make stuff look cool and it just looks like it's really fun that's a lot I mean, I won't go too far off the beaten path here, but you bring up a good point yeah. that I'm sure we can, you know, talk about in some other one, but it's like, I feel like that's a lot of like creative jobs. It's yeah. like a lot 100%. of people have these really like romanticized, like, oh, you know, it must be so amazing to like do what you love as your job mm-hmm. and this and that. It's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I do of love course. it, but like when it becomes your job, there's a lot more to it. Th- yeah. There's a lot of like less desirable things that come yeah. along with that. Oh Yeah. But no, I uh, I started realizing that it just, it drained me to, to work so hard to try and get clients and really not make any money off of it. You know, I would occasionally get like a few thousand dollars for something, but that was like very occasionally. Like if I actually had to like settle down and like get a place to rent, live, like actually have bills every month, it was not sustainable whatsoever. Um, and I was like, well you know, I have this huge audience, right? We've got at this point, maybe like 50,000 subscribers. Like there's a lot of people. There's a lot of people that tune in and engage with everything that I'm doing. There's a lot of people that talk to me constantly. And like, 
if I had something to provide them, why wouldn't I? Um, and so I decided I, I, you know, I wanted to turn it into a clothing brand and, and it would have been cool to like rebrand, come out with a different name, whatever. And this is why I say LEP <laughs> automotive is like an awful name is because you'll never live it down. It, it just <laughs> every, literally everybody calls me lep and like, that's not it at all. It's not, that's, all, that's not, it's it literally, it's not lep. It's L E P. Um, but it is what it is. It hey, just, I think I think maybe you just need to like change your perspective because it's like VIP and what? VIP. <laughs> just lab. LEP and lab. I'm totally joking. <laughs> I'm, I'm so sorry. Continue. But uh, no, it, it is what it is. Let me, it, like, let, me, it, let me invalidate you really quick. <laughs> <laughs> it, it already had too much momentum where it didn't make sense to start over. It would have been a lot more hard work to like start over. At this point, I already had like demand from people who watched my stuff and engaged with the you know the content that i was putting out they're like you know we want shirts we want stickers we want hoodies blah 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 and i had started making like small little drops and stuff for friends and whatever and people caught wind of that and were like yo we need this and then i was like okay i need to start coming out with like cool designs and so initially like the big thing was that i wanted to make the brand about specifically just media stuff related to cars and so drive and shoot was like a almost like an off brand that i'd come up with that could at one, at some point like take its own path away from lep um and so that was like one of the first designs that i put out was i did this cool like rose camera design that was on the back of this hoodie and i did a limited drop of it and it sold out really really quick and everybody loved the quality and i was like damn this is actually really cool. Like occasionally I could just put something out and people would buy it. And then like the money, I can, that's that feeling. That's that feeling that I'm talking about. That moment where you look at a situation, you're like, fucking holy people People like what I'm doing. Like that's what I'm talking about. And and yeah, I just, uh, I decided that the, the best way for me to like actually involve myself in this was to like fully involve myself. So I started working at a screen printer. I literally started working there. I'd ask questions about everything. I started learning good garments, bad garments, good prints, bad prints, everything and anything to do with that business and like how to, I guess, streamline even um, selling merchandise. Like I learned a lot about shipping logistics from that job. Mm -hmm. And trust me, that job sucked ass. (laughs) I literally hated working there. Um, I did embroidery for a long time. And then when COVID hit, I did screen printing stuff and it was, it was fucking miserable in there. Um, and the whole while, like as soon as I made the switch from it being a media company over to being more of a brand was around the same time that I'd like completely fallen out of love with video stuff because I'd, I'd worked so hard to do it and try and make it somewhere. And I'd built, I built a reputation, but I hadn't built anything that was like financially sustainable and it was just draining. Like you were saying you lost money. It was the same thing for me. I was just traveling nonstop trying to like make badass videos and I couldn't make ends meet because I never had money. And so I was like, well, this is, this is a better way for me to like maybe make money. But at the same time, like I just want to put out really cool stuff. I just just want to do. I've always wanted to have a brand. I've always wanted to have like cool shirt designs. And so that's, what I threw myself into and from the jump, like, yeah, we'd have like money come in and then I'd be like, hell yeah, we made a bunch of money. And then I'm like, wait, I have to use it to buy. Absolutely. (laughs) Yeah. I learned that real quick. Like after you do your first like drop or something, you get that money come in and you're like, dude, this is fucking sick. Oh, wait a minute. (laughs) I can go buy a project car. And like, I didn't do that, but it was, it was like, I can buy something and I would buy something. And then I'd be like, how do well, I buy the new stuff? It, come, it come, <laughs> comes around time to like do the next like drop or whatever and you have nothing to pay for it. And you're like, oh yeah, that's how that works. You sell stuff and then you use the money to go back right. into it. Um, so yeah, it has been uh, a good couple of years now. It's been about three years or so that I've been very heavily involved in branding and merchandise stuff um, and been building my car all that time too. Three years. Um, three years for this three years for <laughs> what we have out front dude. unbelievable <laughs> but um what an eyesore it was it was interesting when when it first started to make that shift into being a lifestyle brand um i started you know heavily studying other brands not car brands i would study brands outside of that you know other street style streetwear mm-hmm. brands that interested me and one thing that 
showed up in common was that every brand has like a message behind it. And I was like, well, you know, what's, what's my fucking message? You know, I just started this out as a media company and now I'm like doing merchandise stuff. And I thought about it long and hard. And that's why I came up with the like drive and shoot thing. I was like, I really want this to be a thing where I can positively have a platform to like help, you know, other photographers and creatives, you know, get better at their craft and get into it and like, I don't know, find a fucking career out of it, whatever. Yeah. Um, and that was cool, but it also, I realized like it's too specific of a niche. Like I have a lot of people that watch my videos because they're also creatives, but I also have a lot of people that watch my videos since I've been building my car that just like cars. Right. So now I, I kind of just provide whatever I can to everybody and, and tick all of those boxes. And at the same time, the, the biggest thing is always just been some of the things that I push with building my cars is, you know, execute things well, think about things. And it comes through in, in media stuff and building cars, just, just do everything to a high standard. And that's, that's a big thing that both me and you agree on. And it's something that we talk about in this podcast. Yeah. I think it's really interesting, um, you know, comparing like how not fast came up, you know, given what you just said, because like when I think about it, I didn't, I didn't do it in reverse, but like the whole message thing, mm -hmm. that was like kind of like I said, it started as a joke, but like the very next thing that was just a natural byproduct of me observing stuff, yeah, became like what I wanted that to mean, right? You know, and that, as we just talked about, ultimately that is kind of what gave me my lifeblood, which was my photographers, you know, who were willing to share this incredible original content that they were creating. You know right. what I mean? It's like, and I've told them this and I'll say, you can clip this shit. <laughs> you can clip this shit that not fast was only ever what not fast was because of the photographers that use the not fast watermark. Yeah. They were all incredible and they were a part of not fast because they had styles that they just, they had styles that could be, imitated but never replicated yeah i mean it's just that's why i approached them because like the kind of cars it was always a little weird to me when i thought about it too hard because like i would give them loose parameters of, as like, far as like what kind of cars that yeah. i was looking for right and what i eventually realized was like i was giving them parameters that were general enough that it's like most people can agree that oh that's a cool car yeah but but in a way, over time, I realized it's like, oh, I'm literally just like, hey, I personally like this kind of car. Yeah. Look for this kind of car. And obviously, I didn't go into it thinking like, yes, take pictures of only the cars. <laughs> that I, you know what I mean? Because that's certainly not what happened. I mean, right. I gave them the loose parameters. But what excited me was that I knew they had the parameters and then they were going to run with it. Yeah. That was going to be whatever car caught their eye. But they kind of matched they, up to the style they already, of the brand. Yeah. yeah, you know, they already came equipped with their individual style of photography. So it's like yeah. the car is already cool, but then them shooting the car, the cool goes up by like 100. Yeah. You know what I mean? And so it was the message for me kind of came first. Mm -hmm. um, and then on my end, so one thing that I've always – enjoyed uh about liam's uh products and apparel and stuff is you know i've 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 talked about you know how liam does this in other episodes like liam is the kind of guy that is he's not going to go up by himself you know what i mean he's going to bring people up with him that's just how he is i mean that's yeah. just how he is and you know with designers that's how he is liam will contract out you know he will give from what i've seen anyway he will give designers like, hey, here's my general idea. Show me what you got. Yeah. Like um, I, I'll, I'll usually like uh, the majority of the designs that have ever come out from LEP. And I, I say majority because it's not all of them. 
um, have been like original ideas that I've come up with and like made like a weird sketch for yeah. and then just like sent it to a designer and be like, yo, I want your take on it because I like your style. And I always contact designers that are outside of car stuff because I hate that all of these car brands look it's the just fucking same material because yeah. they all use the same designers and they don't think to look outside of the car community for mm -hmm. designers. Um, so I've always tried to avoid that as best as I can um, and, and get like really original ideas. But some of them, which it happens more often than not, a lot of these designers that I follow and have worked with will always be doing stuff and they always like post something and they're like, Hey, this design is for sale. And I see it and I'm like, I'll I can take it. I, no, I'm like, I can adapt that to like, yeah. you know, work for car stuff. And I've done that for quite a few things. And I, I really enjoy that process of like seeing a design and be like, how the fuck can I make that about yeah. cars? Cause the shit's hard. I just want to make it about cars and then just figure it out. And so some designs have more meaning than others. Some are just like really fucking cool designs. But, um, but that, there's always, there's always a decent amount of thought behind any of them. Even, no, but even the, if the point is, is like you're, you're contracting out and you are, you are exposing your plat. You are exposing your base mm -hmm. to those designers. You are directing Sometimes. traffic. Well, okay. I, I I try not like I I don't want to be the person who's gatekeeping, but I no. You, I don't. You've talked about this before. Yeah, I was gonna say I don't but, explicitly give away artists because I don't want all of the other car brands to right. look like mine because I work really hard to find these guys. But you've talked about it. you give. But I'm ha yeah, you're I'm not, yeah. You're not hiding. Always. I'm the always tools, happy right? to provide the tools and be like, hey, you can find artists like this by searching here. Blah blah blah. But um, what I'm getting at is, I am a control freak. Mm -hmm. At least when it came to not fast, because not fast was my baby. Yeah. Right. I'm a control freak. Um, as I've mentioned probably too many times at this point, I'm an artist. I've been an artist before all of this, so. I was kind of like, well, if I do the designs, they will be exactly how I want them to be. Oh, yeah. I, right? I really wish I could have been in that position, but I'm just too picky and never learned design stuff. But, well, in, there, were, there were pros and cons to that because, you know, like with your, with your designs, I think that's one of the things that I love about your designs is it ends up being your idea, mm. but it is so Someone finely else's. executed because this yeah. is what these guys do. Yeah. I am not... A professional graphic designer. I'm just not. As much as I wish I operated at that level right right now, back then, whatever. Yeah. No saying for the future, but right now, back then, I'm just not there. I'm not going to act like I am or was, you know? So I am proud of what I put out, it, you know, based on how everything went. Yeah. It seemed like people really enjoyed what... <laughs> What? I'm like too far from the mic. I can't. <laughs> it seems like people really enjoyed what I put out. Yeah. Um, you know, and realistically at that moment in my life, I was just so inundated by the amount of time I was spending doing everything that I didn't want to do school, work, whatever. Yeah. You know, the it was, only, it's like a release to, yeah. to do something outside. You know, so it's like, I just, I need my creative outlet. I always need that in my life. And it just happens way too often that I just get so inundated with everything else. I just completely forget about it. Yeah. You know, so making designs for decals, t-shirts, what the fuck ever became like that creative outlet for me. And I was just having so much fun with it. You know what I mean? It's like, there were so many decal designs and stuff that I made that I enjoyed that never made it onto anything. Yeah. You know? Um, but yeah, I mean, and it was, it was a learning process and stuff in that. Um, my, uh, my guy who did all my decals and shirts, uh, Michael Elvidge, uh, is at Aimless Goods. He's up in Washington. Mm -hmm. Thank fuck for Mike, dude. He was like, he had the patience of a saint the entire time because uh -huh. I would be sending him these vector files that were just a fucking mess <laughs> because I did. This is something that I'm working on about myself when I learn how to do things. Yeah. I'm very impatient. So I am a criminal when it comes to like, Learning how to, you ever seen that meme of Homer Simpson where he's got like all his fat, like rubber banded behind him? Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. Okay. That's basically me when it comes to like learning shit. That's like what your that. vector like, files look like. When you remove you, some layers, yeah. there's a bunch of bullshit behind there. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> when you, when you look at it with all the layers on, you're like, oh, it's pretty cool. Yeah. And then when you like take some of the layers off, you're like, oh my God. And so 
you know, I would be sending Mike these absolutely ridiculous fucking. And the only thing that he ever, he would be like, hey, man, like, do me a favor. Like, it would just, can you, can you, like, do this for me? Like, that would make it a little bit easier for me. Yeah. But he would never get mad. Yeah. He always gave me a great, I'm like, I'm plugging Mike right now, but he would never get mad. Yeah. He would always give me a good price. Like, he was just super patient with me. And the thing that was awesome was he was so jazzed about what I was doing. See, that's he awesome. Was so, he was so excited about what I was doing, what I was making, what the idea was. So it's yeah. like that pushed me even more. Um, but yeah, so it's like my designs were like a creative outlet for me. But you know, one thing that I realized very quickly was what I am pretty good at yeah. is making a cohesive design language and curating things. Yeah. Not fast taught me that motherfucker. I can curate some shit, dude. <laughs> Matt's always talking about curating. If I'm good at anything, it is curating content. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, uh, well, okay. So I think one of the biggest things that we can like take away from this, or at least like a message for this podcast, if we we're going to as a whole, is you know when it comes to brands and building a business, company, team, club, whatever. Um, it's easy to be like so proud and set on doing everything yourself because that's what I did for the longest time. But you'll come to a point where you realize it's the people that can help you. Like having mm -hmm. a team of people that are all on board and all excited and passionate about what it is that you're doing. They're the people that bring different skills, different elements right. to the table and they can make shit happen. You guys cohesively as a group is what can make shit happen. You just have to, you have to, you have to curate that group. You yeah. have to use discretion because while yes, we're absolutely saying that if you're going to do this stuff, get help. Get, I mean, get, yeah. get people outside of you, but. Don't, do you don't ever expect have, free help. Of course. Well, but, not only that, but have discretion. Yeah. I mean, if you're, if you're going to have a team around you, if you have a team of people that you're close with and you know you're all on the same page, that's that's the best, right? Yeah. But it's like, just also know that if you go into it like, oh, well, I, you know, I just need a group and I need it now. Yeah. Like, it's, it's if not, yeah, I don't really work like yeah, that. If it's kind of something that happens naturally. Right. And so, but I guess going back to the, the, design, the design part of it is, uh, you know, that was eventually... That control freakness mm. ended up biting me in the ass because, you know, like we like I just brought up, you know, a lot of Liam's apparel and products are so good and so professional and just are so fucking cool. <laughs> Thank <you>. Because <laughs> he has the foresight or the insight that if he can't, you know, execute something how, how he would like. Not going to do it. There's somebody out there that can. So he's not, yeah. you know, you're not going to, uh, what's the fucking word? You're not going to compromise no. just yeah. because you want that control. Oh, yeah. That's what I did. There, there are so many products and designs that while I'm proud of them, could have been miles better right. had I just gotten some. But I will say this, Mr. Perpetually Broke... <laughs> Part of the reason I did them all myself was because I could not afford right, right. to hire a graphic designer to do those things for me. So, you know, it as usual, there's always two sides to things like oh, that. Oh, absolutely. You know? And I'm glad that you bring that up, too, because, you know, I've had the same struggles, too, with my business, with me being a creative, with me being so heavily involved in photo and video work. When I started diving into the more branding side of stuff, um, I'd gotten further away from from photo and video and that's what my brand was built on and it's hard for me now realizing that like there's a lot of people that fuck with the brand because it's a cool brand like people come up to the booth and buy stuff and probably don't even know that i like make videos or at one point made like really cool cinematic videos mm -hmm. i mean i think most people know that i'm a photographer but a lot of people now just fuck with the designs and that's awesome um, but I am working really hard on trying to get everything kind of back together and getting it back focused around media mm -hmm. um, because that's, that's where it started. That's what gave me the 
ultimately that's what gave me everything. All of the growth mm. is from media stuff. When I said that we had 50,000 subscribers a few years ago, we've barely gone up since then. I've actually lost subscribers over the years on YouTube and gained them at like a fairly constant rate to where it doesn't really change. And like now it sucks because a lot of people just look at the YouTube channel and they're like, oh, you got 60,000 subscribers, but then like a few thousand people will watch the videos. Yeah. So I very, very much like in the past couple of years, especially with building my car, tried to focus more on like building a really good audience. Um, I don't really care about the numbers. It's more so just like getting people engaged with stuff. It's like we and have like, with this really. Yeah. I'm, I'm trying like my business, I'm trying to like engage with people more and more and like, it was really difficult for me to make that switch from like, well, I want to get back into making video stuff. And then when I try and trying to balance everything else at the same time, it's not really possible. And so I started venturing out to hiring people to help me with filming, hiring people to help me with photography stuff. And it's great. It's just really difficult when you are a control freak and you're so picky about media stuff. It's hard to yeah. get a team. It's hard to hire people and like, be a hundred percent happy with the end result if you're not in control of it. Um, and so I'm still working on that and I'm still, you know, trying to develop like a team that is going to be around me longer term. Um, and it's, it's a hard thing to, to do, but, um, it's, it's definitely once you do figure it out, it's 100% worth it. Cause this stuff is not easy to do on your own. You know, I've been the only person involved. I've been the person who is, involved with supply um i'm i've even made all of my own products before i've been the person who is organizing everything packing and shipping i'm the person who is loading up the truck to go to a fucking show at like three o'clock in the morning when we have to leave in two hours i'm the person who's making the videos editing the videos running the booth running all of the logistics side of it staying on top of tax stuff paperwork blah 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 it's hard to do everything on your own. And like you said, when you don't have money, you don't have an option. Yeah, I mean... And that's that's exactly how it has been for me. Like, yes, I'm a control freak, but everything to do with my business and my brand has been, I don't have money. I can't afford to pay someone to do this, and I still don't. Um, I spent so well, much... Well, he didn't before we started, because now we get paid per podcast. <laughs> Um, according we, to that one YouTube yeah, according comment. to that one guy, we're getting paid per podcast. So he's doing better now, but this is in the past. By the way, that, we was, don't, that was a joke. We don't actually get any <laughs> that, money for this just, podcast. Just so we're clear, that was a joke. And if we did get any money for this podcast, it would be going into my credit card debt to pay to off, pay for to the, pay off for the fucking <laughs> shit. So, <clears throat> but, uh, but no, it's, uh, it's hard. Like last year, I, I spent so much money on hiring other people to help me with stuff. And I still was not like a hundred percent content with everything. So it's, I'm still struggling with it. And, you know, this year I just want to provide more and more opportunities where I can. And, um, every little bit of the money that I get come in from this business goes right back into it. It just gets recycled. Yeah. Like me living in this house and paying for my bills doesn't come from the business. It comes from me taking like side gigs with photo and video stuff outside of car shit to just pay the bills. Mm -hmm. and all of the money like yeah we we do pretty well i don't i haven't totaled up everything from last year but like it's it's up there it's like over one hundred and fifty thousand dollars in sales last year and I, i'm not saying that to brag i, I want that to be like a well, thing of inspiration for no, some I was, people but i was about to say and i'm glad you said that number because one thing that i think we can both agree on to anybody that's listening to this and like taking notes because they're legitimately thinking about getting into this kind of deal yeah this is, it's kind of like he said in the beginning, like, you are not, unless you are already rich, wealthy, whatever the fuck the PC term it, unless yeah. you already have a source of money that yeah. you're just going to be able to, like, do exactly what you want it, yeah. and just be comfortable and not, you know, do whatever, then that's one thing. But if you're like us and a lot of the people you know, that are making brands that I personally really respect and I think they're doing the right thing. We didn't, we didn't is, have... You're going to go into this and you're going to get discouraged right and left. You're going to fucking lose money. Yeah. And the money that you do get is going to get recycled into the fucking company if you want to keep going. I mean, that's just right. the way that it is. Like, 
I, I use that hundred and fifty thousand dollar number, and you know, to a lot of people, that's like, whoa, you made one hundred and fifty grand in a year, and it's like, no, no. <laughs> he did not. <laughs> Actually, I yeah, we did one hundred and fifty thousand dollars. I'm just using that as a number, right? It's I think it's more than that. I have not totaled it, and I actually need to do that like in the next couple of weeks. But um, for this context, for this context, one hundred fifty thousand dollars. I spent one hundred fifty thousand dollars on running this business. Yeah. Um, I, I, I think we made some money. I'm not going to say that the, the business is losing money. Like it's sustainable. Not fast enough. Enough. Lost all the money. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But I, in previous years, I've 100% lost money. Um, and the biggest, I guess the biggest piece of advice that I could give to a lot of people that are like, you know, maybe thinking about getting into running a brand. Um, number one, social media is a huge thing, right? Use that to your advantage, however you can. And the biggest thing that I'm going to say is you need to develop an audience somewhere, right? You need to have a customer base for your products. If you just come out with a brand and nobody knows who you are, nobody knows the brand, it's going to take a really long time for that to get traction because there's nothing else there. Um, and so if you're already building an audience for just stuff that you do in your life, whether it's related to cars or whatever shit you could have a gym brand you could make cookies it doesn't matter build an audience that is into that stuff mm -hmm. and then use social media use all of these platforms tiktok youtube any of these platforms to make stuff that is going to get people engaged in the way that you want to don't do it because you want big numbers if you want a loyal customer base you want a loyal audience that buys everything that you put out because they want to support you, you have to make it in a way that people want to support you. The reason that people buy into my brand and people are willing to support me is not just because I put out cool designs. The cool designs is what brings people in and ultimately is a selling point for the people to justify spending their money. The majority of the reason that we do sales is because people fuck with me. They right. have watched my videos for a long period of time. They have seen me develop as a person over the years. They've seen me, you know, building a car, making videos, talking about my life and being open about some of the struggles that I go through. And people relate to me as a real person. And that's why people support me. And, you know, it's different for different brands. Um, you know, some people just have a brand and there's the complete separation where it's very corporate away from having an audience. But... I am going to tell you guys that if you want to grow a brand right now, it is super important that you use all of the the utilities that are basically free to you. Social media is free. Content, to an extent, is free. Um, as long as you can be creative with it and figure out, like, we all have an iPhone, right? You can make TikToks. You just, you just have to like think. fucking gross, no? No, but, like, you just, have to, <laughs> you just have to think about, you know, what it is that you want. What do you want your demographic to be? Who, do you, who is it that you want to have your products? What audience do you want? What's your, you know, future plans for growing the business? Um, is that audience going to transfer over to the things that you want to do later down the line? And for me, I've been very, very careful about what it is that I do um, in the way that I bring people in, how they engage with the content, how they engage with the business, me as a person, um, and how that will translate later down the line when I ultimately move on to other things. And the other things that I want to move into all still relate to the exact demographic that I have right now. And that's another reason why we have the podcast, is the podcast is, is a great way for us to grow the community and build an audience of people that think the same way that we do. Mm -hmm. um, and this, hopefully is something where it can be very helpful to people. Um, and if it does grow into something huge, it can go in different directions. It can still be a podcast, but this could be a car show. It could be any number of things. Um, and that's why it's important for us to, to build an audience that fucks with what we do. Right. Um, and like you said, it's, it's a really special thing when you feel that moment where you realize you're doing something good. Yeah. The people fuck with what you're doing and they think it's sick and they will continue to fuck with it as long as you are Stay true to consciously doing, thinking about you know? what it is that you're doing and you're staying true to, you know, your message and, and your, I guess, your motives for, for what that brand is. I think that's something that I just kind of thought about when you said the word motive. Mm -hmm. um, I had a note in my, it's probably still in there, honestly, I've never deleted it, but I had a note 
in my phone that's so old it's at like the very bottom of my notes list mm. I was going to say, you're saying this, I'm pretty sure I have something on here. And it literally is, I sat down one day just when I was just in the throes of like when Not Fast was, when I was doing my fucking thing, dude. When we were like, everything was going really well. I was like really, really hot on my idea and this and that. Uh And I wrote it all down. And I wrote it all down in the same way that I would explain it to somebody as I was talking to them. And I did it that way because I thought to myself, if for whatever reason I find myself one day kind of forgetting like why Mm -hmm. I ultimately got into this, I'm going to go back and look at this because I think especially if you make a brand and if you find success and you find traction, and even if you have, for whatever reason, you have some kind of meteoric rise, right? Mm. with the more reach and the more people and which turns into the more money that you're getting coming in. Yeah. I think at that moment, a decision pops up very quickly. You can stick with the original reason why you did it when you were young and bright eyed and Mm. decided to make a brand Mm. or you can get completely overtaken by, Oh shit. This can make money. I'm making money now. What else can I do to make more money? Yeah. That I think I think anybody that has had a brand that is really successful, whether they'd admit it to you or not, reaches that moment. You yeah, know what I no, mean? I and think everybody does. I think for me as an individual, can't and won't speak for anybody else, but for me as an individual, your decision, like what you decide in that moment mm. is when I continue or stop fucking with your brand. Yeah. Because, in, well, you know, we, there we, are see it, we see it happen a lot. Yeah, there are brands where it's, like, painfully obvious that that, that moment came and went. So and they oh, they made a bunch of money. The money. They d- yeah, they decided, you know oh, we're I mean? going to. And it's it's just, it sucks. It we're going to start that. buying really nice cars and it's blah, blah, blah. Like, for me, okay, this is my take on this because, obviously, I've had that position come and go. Mm-hmm. My thing was that I was like, wow, this is really good. The money is cool. But also, like. I love what I do and like the things that I want to do are so directly related to this brand Mm -hmm. and the stuff that I'm doing. I was like, I kind of do both, but I have to figure it out very strategically. So the way that I did it where other people may have made like a boatload of money off of stuff and, and just been like, yeah, dude, I went and bought this. I don't fucking know. Supra. I went and bought an M3 or whatever, because it's like, it's sick. I really wanted it. Well, for me, I really want to, build really, really high-end cars. And so I started using the money from the brand to build a really high-end car, but then find a way to make that car work for the brand. Right. So the, the business owns the car. All of the stuff I do the car are business expenses because I document all of it. And that car has done so much for my business. It has helped yeah. me grow a new audience. And so anytime that I have like goals or things that I want in my personal life, I find a way to justify them through business Mm -hmm. and in a way that it then ties together with my audience, my demographic. And, you know, I'm never doing anything because I'm like, yeah, I made a boatload of money. It's time to fucking flex and go buy this really nice car. I'm doing it because it's, it's something that I really, really want and I can find a way strategically to make it work. I may not be making a bunch of money in my personal life. I may not be like getting rich off of this shit, but I'm using it as an excuse to do the things that I want to do. Yeah. And that's totally fine with me. And well, I, I, it's easy. It's so easy for some people who sit back and they're just like, damn, you're killing it. I don't really feel like supporting the brand anymore. Must be it nice. looks like you're, you know, you're doing really well. I don't need to give you any more money, but that's, that's not it at all. Like I, I'm very thankful to all of the people that like continuously support me. You guys have to understand that I'm never like, well off from this. I'm always (laughs) using the money from it to go into doing more stuff related to the brand. Um, The the money is never getting spent on shit that, you know, doesn't in the end of the day benefit you guys that are part of the audience. Um, It always goes back to back into it one way or another, whether it's new equipment for video stuff or it's parts for the car, all of it goes right back into the brand. Yeah. Um, So, I mean, I, I don't, that that I don't really know what else I can say besides that. I mean, it's you know, it's so okay. It just if you make the wrong choice, 
it'll Ultimately, become apparent. Yeah. Your shit becomes hollow. And it's right. like, it's, here, here is where the disconnect is in a lot of ways for a lot of people. A lot of the brands and people that run said brands that I really fuck with and have a lot of respect for are the people that, this is going to sound really strange, but like they are the people that I know that are really, I don't want to say struggling behind the scenes, but like that after years and years, they're still hauling ass because they have to. Yeah. And the reason that they have to is they are doing this for the reason that they started doing this. And they may not be as like numbers wise successful as these other brands that made that decision to just make money. And sure, right. they have hella followers. They're making good money. They're making product sales, this and that, this and that into I've, I guess, understandably, technically, to a lot of people, they'd be like, well, I mean, isn't that the point? And it's like, if you ask me... Yeah. I mean, to well, some people, listen, yeah. If you ask me, no. That is absolutely not the point. The The point is not to just, like, get to a point where, like, well, I can make a lot of money off this and then just solely chase the money. Right. By all means, yes. If you're going to have a company, try to make... It's a fucking business. Like, right. why Try to make you, it profitable. You but. know what I'm... Like, that is not... If you get into this for, like, a reason that is really personal to you that's not just hollow and something that you just kind of, like, were like, uh, well, that, you know, that those words are pretty cool, and it seems to, like, loosely have to do with yeah this community. Like, yeah, let's just go with that. Like, no. If you have an idea that, you know, came to you organically and you're really passionate about it, mm -hmm. do it for that. Absolutely. Like, <laughs> well, here's my thing too: is like, if it's a lot, there are, there are going to be people that that start brands within the car community because one, they're into cars and they see the potential to make a bunch of money off of it. And there's going to be some people that are super passionate about cars and have their other, you know, personal reasons for wanting to do a brand. Um, but I think if the brands that are super passionate, you know, people like myself, like you. Um, just other people that are super passionate. They have a message. They stick to their guns. They stay true to the, you know, the form and everything to do with their brand. They just stay true to it. Those are the people that, if they can maintain it, will stick around yes. long term. And yes, the, the brand, the brands point. that pop up and make a boatload of money, flash in the pan is what they, they call yeah. That. They literally they have a timer. They yeah. have a, they have a shelf life because yeah. at the end of the day, there's gonna come a point where people realize Trends that they come are, and go. yeah, pe there's going to come a point where people realize that these brands are just here to make money off of us as a subculture. And as soon as the consumer realizes that they, they walk away and move on to something else. Right. And the big thing that I'd like to encourage with this podcast is that like, yo, support small businesses, like support yeah, honestly. people. Like if, if you have the choice to go to a coffee, like to go get coffee and you're going to go to Starbucks instead of like a small local place, go to the small local place. Like why wouldn't you? They're well, real, they're real people. I was going to, I was going to say like this Starbucks, I hope Starbucks this pays sense. wages regardless of how many people come. I, I and hope go this through makes place. sense like as it does in my brain, but like small businesses, like that's you. Yeah. It's like, that's it's the people that's you, <laughs> you going into a small business. Think about how it would feel if you had a business and somebody came in to support your business. You are that person. Yeah. It makes you, that. it makes you feel awesome. You know what I mean? You are the person that's doing that. You, Whereas, are the, you are the person that's making, you are the person that is giving the owner founder, whatever of that business, that feeling that we're alluding to where you're like, holy fuck. Like people, people are into what I'm doing. Yeah. yeah. When you're supporting small business, when you're supporting brands, businesses that make original content, mm -hmm. that's what you're you, doing. you are becoming that feeling. I mean, that's, that's pretty cool. If you ask me like, yeah. I, you know, and it's, but that, I think that's, I think this is something that I would like to like lead us into because I think it's important to talk about. One of so yours obviously is still very very much going strong. If it's cool with you, I kind of want to like touch on like what happened. Yeah. With not fast. That that's so, totally fun. Um 
So a little, I'm not going to, certainly not going to deep dive into it because I don't want to like kill the mood by any means, but what ultimately ended up happening with Not Fast was an amalgamation of a number of things. Um, anybody that's listening to this that like followed Not Fast to the very end knows that there were probably like at the very least two, if not three distinct times where I kind of like tried to like restart it and try just try and start the engine back up and mm-hmm. I got it to crank, but oh, ugh, why am I using that analogy just because we're on a car <laughs> podcast? But like the point, the thing is I, you know, got really hype and I was like, I'm going to do it, man. I'm going to do it. I'm going to get it restarted and we're going to get this moving and I'm going to, you know, I'm going to get back to that part of my life and it's going to be great. Yeah. And, you know, the first time that it kind of fell off was very much because of a mixture of life stuff that was not fun and mental health stuff that was really not fun. Um, And as much as I wish, you know, I think there are certainly some people out there even not even trying to like invalidate my experience. I think there are just some people out there that would be like, you know, well, I would have like thrown myself into it to try and like get through whatever, whatever. And that's fair. I mean, there are absolutely people out there that right. people deal with things, differently. you know, would and have done that, you know, but I just, I was not, I couldn't do it. I couldn't make it happen. And so, you know, when I came back, I reached a little bit more, uh, you know, even ground of my life. I did. I tried to like, you know, restart it, get it going. And this fucking amazing team of photographers I had were, they were down, man. They were like, Hey man, like, you know, we were just, we were just kind of here if you needed us, but obviously we were just doing our own thing. You know, we, a lot of them had, whether it was through not fast or independently or both, they had gained more traction, which was fucking awesome to see. You know what I mean? I loved that. Um, but you know, I was, I was kind of coming back to them and be like, Hey guys, like, Sorry, I dropped off the face of the planet for, like, (laughs) months, you know. And they were all like, dude, we get it. Life happens. Like, it's not a problem, man. Like, you know, we're here. We're ready to go. Like, whenever you're ready, we're ready and this and that. And I'm endlessly grateful for that. You know, if you, you, guys, if you are listening to this podcast and you shot for Not Fast, I fucking love you. I fucking love you because, like I said, you guys were the lifeblood of what we were doing. It was, it just would not have happened at all without those guys. And they were really patient with me during that period. You know, they were patient with me those two different times, you know, the third time, (laughs) the third time they were nice enough to not be like, this dude's losing his mind. (laughs) Because I just kept, dude, it was just one of those things where it became a part of my life where I was just in such a shitty place that, this, I don't know if I want to use this analogy, but I think it's going to be the most visceral that people can feel. But it's kind of like that relationship that you remember where you were happy. Yeah. And you're in a place in your life where you were just really not happy. And you just feel like going back to that relationship. Dude, you should have changed it from not fast to not happy. <laughs> Shut the fuck <laughs> Made it into a sad boy brand, dude. I, it would have blown up, dude. Oh, it, yeah, it, 100% was, it, was the, it was the right. It was the right time period. But... No, so stop the Samboy brands, please, please, <laughs> please. If well, you if you actually well, okay, no, 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 they're, they're, no, no. We're gonna bite into that. Stop doing it. <laughs> well, I was gonna say like if you have a legitimate message behind it, then like sure. I just hate like let me clarify a little bit. I hate the idea that people like try to profit off of mental health. As a matter, you know what? When we it's are, like it's a serious thing and are people are in, dealing with it. We're in a brand episode. Let me let me finish up where I'm going and let's, then I absolutely do want to talk. I about do that. I want to touch on this too cuz you were talking about like a thing and this drew me to like pull this piece of paperwork up. Oh, fuck. I didn't realize. Oh. Uh All right, let me finish this and all then right. we'll bounce to that and then we'll bounce back. All right, all right. But um yeah, so you know, not fast was that thing cuz I just remember what that was for me, yeah. you know, dude, not fast was everything to me, really. I mean, for years, I mean, not fast in and of itself got me through a lot of shit. You know, the people, the friends I met along the way, like y'all, mm-hmm. I, I'm not exaggerating. My best friends, my best friends in my life. All came from that, right? All but two of them. Like that were my my best friends from like childhood in Atlanta. Yeah, all of them came as a result of not fast. 
all of my best friends. And even my friends that are not my best friends, that I just, they're my fucking friends and they're awesome, also came from Not Fast. You know, I was somebody before Not Fast that would go to a show, lurk, shoot photos, be like, damn, this was cool, get back in my car and get the fuck out of there. Yeah. I would never talk to anybody, because what did I have to talk to them about? Yeah. You know what I mean? It just wasn't, when Not Fast happened, if I saw a car that I liked, I was like, I'm going to go talk to the person that owned that It kind of gave thing. you an excuse to delve exactly. more into something that you liked. Yeah. Exactly. And it's like I it gave that. me an excuse to just walk well, up and talk to people. I had the same thing with photography stuff. My camera was, I lived vicariously through my camera. Yeah. You know, I, I wanted a nice show car, but I could never have one. But my camera was the thing that got me close to being around show cars and talking to people and learning things and, you know, finding an excuse to just like... in. <laughs> involve yourself in a culture that you love is like it's a big thing exactly and so yeah so all that to say like not fast was my happy place you know so it's like as i was kind of as i was like trying over and over again to just like get that shit started i am somebody that i am not gonna half ass something yeah especially not fast because where what I did with not fast and it's so funny just as like an aside it's so funny because when not fast ultimately when I just like buried it Mm -hmm. it had literally exactly 2,000 followers yeah if you if you talk to me and you don't know me you don't know anything about not fast and you hear like everything that I have to say about it yeah and then you look and it has 2,000 you'd be like what? Like, how you the probably fuck? probably think it was so much bigger. Yeah, like, how the fuck did you get all of it? It was 2,000 followers when I put it in the ground. And it was, like, just the thing about those 2,000 followers is, you know, minus probably, minus probably what was, like, 500, like, ghost followers or bots or whatever the <laughs> fuck. Like, those <laughs> followers were, like, about what I was they doing. Were, yeah. You know what I mean? Loyal, I had loyal people who like really fucked with what you were doing and will buy whatever you And that, out. you know, that was unbelievably valuable to me. But yeah, so it was just the things I did, the people that I met, you know, when I would go out and shoot features and my guys would do these incredible photo sets of these cars, all the while I would be talking to the owner. Yeah. I'm good friends with all of the owners of all of the feature cars that we ever did. I mean, it was just, it was such an amazing experience to me. And it just like, it was such, honestly, honestly, Mm -hmm. it was kind of a sad extension of where I was in my life that I just kept trying to make it happen again. Yeah. Because I was like, that made me happy. And it just was not happening. It just wasn't happening. And I just, I had to bury it, man, because I, I couldn't, I, I had put all of this work in there, all of these people that followed me and commu- and engaged with me and told me, like, how great it was and, you know, how into the idea and all these people that were so stoked about it that I still talk to that are still like, hey, are you going to do... You kind like, of feel like you let them down and stuff yeah, as well. Yeah, you know, and it's just like I had to... Eventually, I had to tell myself, like, look, man, it's just there's always the future. Yeah. But you need to let this go before you run it into the ground. Because yeah. I could I didn't have the heart to do that, you know? And it's just like ultimately I think the final as a matter of fact, definitely the the outside of mental health uh major issues. Uh, the final straw that ultimately told me that it was time to put it away was when I wrecked the Crown Majesta. Yeah. Um, that was the last car I made a custom like junction produce style, uh, not fast VIP banner for it, which I still fucking love. Um, and when I got in the accident and I was just like standing out in front of the car, just staring at it. And I'm like staring at that banner on the top of the windshield. Dude, it like gutted does not even like I was, this is like really dark. But, you know, I told y'all, I'll be honest about this stuff. And it's just like looking at the Crown Majesta, what was arguably my prized possession at a point in my life where I was already just absolutely fucking wrecked. Yeah. 
with the not fast banner on the windshield of this fucking wrecked ass car. I I was like, dude, I I got nothing. Like yeah. I just I literally remember making an Instagram post which like any other time if I made it, I would have been like, damn, that's corny as fuck. But I literally remember just making a post that was just a black and white photo of the wreck that just said, I'm done. Because, yeah. like, I just, I couldn't, I had just been through so much shit and, like, cars and not fast. Damn, I'm getting, like, kind of emotional. This is weird. <laughs> um, you know, cars and not fast were just, like, that is my happy place. Like yeah, I said, that, those were you know, two like that most was, important. That was to you. that was what I loved, and that was what I was trying to to use to keep myself afloat. And it's just kind of like all in that one moment, it just dropped on my head that I kept. I was trying so hard to hold on to that and like get back that 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 feeling and that drive that I had to come home after working and going to school and being like. I'm going to do, like, I'm going to knock out this design. Like, I'm going to make this shit happen. Yeah. I just, I already didn't have that, but I was trying to work through it. I was trying to create it, and I fucking just, I was sitting there looking at that car, and I was just like, I I don't want to do this. I I, I don't, I I can't. Like, I just can't, I have to put this away. I'm sure a lot of people listening can probably relate to certain things to do with that story, too, and I definitely can because there's been so many moments one throughout just you know business in general i remember when when riverside got canceled for covid Mm -hmm. i put fifteen thousand dollars of my own money into into that to be the first show that i vendor at and the day before it just gets shut down i I, like full panic mode was like fuck i'm screwed i'm absolutely screwed absolutely and there's been so many so many occasions throughout building my car that oh, I have God, just yeah, I'm sure, literally dude. looked at it and just be like, fuck you. What the, yeah, <laughs> what the fuck am I doing? And I literally, I, I had to have this fucking moment again last yeah. week. Yeah. Well, no, not last week. Literally a couple of days ago to look at my car and be like, I'm fucking over this, dude. Like, I don't want to keep fucking doing this. Yeah. I do not want to keep struggling through life and just having bill after bill pile up on top of me and not be able to make it through this shit. Like it's my life for years has constantly been there. They always have that thing where it's like one step forward, two steps back or whatever. It feels like it's been one step forward, 10 steps back constantly. There's always something, but I always, always hold on to the fact that like I'm working on something good. I'm, I'm working towards something and like, it's gonna fucking pay off at some point. It doesn't need to be money. I don't need to get rich. Yeah. I just need to get to some point where like I'm happy. I can provide for the people around me. I can like do something good for my community. And like I have a I have the means to do the things that I want to do. Damn, this is just this is about to be my favorite fucking episode. Like this I didn't is think we were gonna fuck, get like, like super into this. But I mean, we can still come back to that. But if you're cool, I just I wanna No, please I wanna stay please. here for a little bit. Like I I know that that holding on that it's gonna we're gonna get there. It's so it's so difficult um, that to keep that you know because it's obviously people that that love you people with the best intentions when you're really in the shit whether it's a chemical imbalance whether it's clinical depression where whether you're just in a really fucked up part of your life other than that you're not really depressed but like life has really just hit your fucking kneecaps with a bat like you know i think everybody's go-to is like it's gonna get better you know and that that's turned in such like a trite saying which kind of sucks but like yeah it's that it's that holding on that you're talking about. It's that holding on that I did for basically my whole life in hopes that I would get to where I am right the fuck now. Yeah. It's like, now that I'm here, it's like, holy fuck, dude. Like, I got here. Oh, yeah. You know, like, and it's just like, because of that, because of 
where I've been and what I've experienced and where I am, I just, and I've always talked about this. I really do just want to one day just, you know, sit down, even if it's, I'm not saying I want to write a book or anything, but like, I just want to muse a little bit about, you know, how I can communicate with people that are just really in the shit. Yeah. You know what I mean? Where there's just, you're just like, bro,